I'm out shooting today doing some uh, ultra wide angle shots using this uh, Sigma 12 to 24 millimeter. This is a fantastic place to be doing it here, lots of foreground interest. Like most of these ultra wide lenses, it's got a fixed petal shaped hood, which means that you can't use the uh, standard 100 millimeter Lee filter system with it. So uh, Lee have developed a whole new system for these ultra wide angle lenses the SW150, which originally was only available for the Nikon 14 to 24 millimeter, but now the range has been expanded to uh, include a whole load of ultra wide angle lenses. And uh, to find out which lenses are, are available, have a look at the uh, Lee Filters website. The filter holder attaches to this adapter, um, these adapter rings, and uh, there's a different uh, adapter for each lens, but they're all basically, basically the same. Very, very easy to fit. You uh, just undo the rings like this, and that pops on, this one pops on the front like that. Then if you just hold the lens like this, turn it upside down, and then you can pop these rear rings on there, and then just screw them up like this. Okay, once you've done it, you don't have to do it again. You can leave it on there because the nice guys at Lee Filters also supply you with one of these neoprene lens hoods. So it's a once only job, but it is nice and simple. The other thing Lee Filters have done is uh, they've expanded the range of filters which are available for the SW150 system. Um, and as well as grads you, and polarizers, you can also get the, the big and little stopper in the new size. As well as that, they've introduced the, uh, a new field pouch for the uh, larger system, and this takes up to uh, 10 filters. So I'm just going to load this up with the filters that I think I'm going to need today. Here we are at Kimmeridge Bay in Dorset. It's a lovely evening, sun shining, lots of blue sky and some nice uh, wispy clouds up there as well. Um, I'm standing on the main western ledge looking towards Clavel's Tower and uh, just want to get a shot across the ledge looking towards the tower there. Right, okay, first, uh, first thing that strikes me is that the shot works well, but the sky lacks a little bit of punch. So I think it's sort of ideal for, uh, for being polarized. So uh, just gonna get the uh, filter holder. This is the uh, new SW150 holder. And that just slots on the front there like that, and then just screws on. So it's nice and secure, but still rotates very, very freely like that. And uh, here's the uh, SW150 polarizer which as you can see is a square piece of polarizing glass rather than a round filter which would have just been enormous. Um, so this goes in the front slot like that so you can fit in neutral density filters and so on behind it. Works like any other polarizer in that you just rotate it until you see the effect that you want. So which in this case is about here. So I'll just take that, uh, take that shot again. And uh, yeah, much improved. So the sky is nice and blue. The clouds are really starting to, uh, starting to stand out there. But just uh, zooming in and scrolling around the picture, one thing I can see is that the, uh, the, the water is a little bit ripply. Um, and I'd, I'd like to have a bit more of a smooth texture on that water. I think it would suit this scene. In order to do that, we want to have a, a long exposure. So we need to use a neutral density filter. And because it's uh, fairly bright sunlight at the moment, then an extreme filter such as the uh, 10 stop Lee Big Stopper is, is what we need. Okay, so just gonna get the, uh, the Big Stopper out. And uh, here we are. As you can see, it's got this uh, foam seal around the back. Now this is to prevent any light leaking in from the side and reflecting back and forth and causing flare in your pictures. So obviously this foam seal has to go facing towards the camera. It also has to go in the right way up 
um, unlike the 100 millimeter system, you can see there's a gap on the seal on this side, but not this side. So it needs to go in this way up with the gap to the sides, not top and bottom. So just uh, slide that in and um, make sure that it lines up with the baffle there, just to prevent any light getting in from the sides. I'm also going to shade the uh, filter um, just to, uh, as an extra insurance to prevent any light leaking in from the sides. Okay, I'd, I'd recommend you do that on a bright day like this. Um, just going to switch into bulb mode and uh, I've calculated a, a one minute exposure for this shot. So uh, here we go. Okay, and just looking at that shot, still got the lovely uh, clouds and the blue sky, but this time got a, a much smoother surface to the water. Looks great. It's getting towards the end of the day and I'm going round to the other side of the bay now for a sunset shoot at Clavel's Pier and I'm going to shoot the new Anthony Gormley statue which was uh, installed recently. Well, here I am at uh, Clavel's Pier at Kimmeridge Bay, uh, just getting set up for sunset. Now, one of the beauties of using these ultra-wide angle lenses is that you can really, really make the most of your foreground and get in nice and close and uh, just get these lovely smooth rocks just sort of looming large in the frame. So, uh, yeah, got the composition there I wanted. Now, I know that once the sun goes down, the scene's going to be pretty contrasty because the, uh, the sky is going to be lit from below by the setting sun and uh, there'll be no direct light falling on the, uh, on the foreground. So I need to do something to uh, try to uh, resolve that contrast problem. And the best way of, of solving the problem is to use a graduated filter. Now, looking at the way the light's falling and, and the, uh, the sky that we've got at the moment, my guess would be that a two-stop uh, hard grad is uh, going to do the trick. So I'm uh, just going to fit one of those and I'm going to put it in the front slot so that I can leave room for an ND filter as well. So just um, line that up with the horizon there. I always find this easier to do in the viewfinder rather than live view. Just get that settling down on the horizon. And uh, I also want to try and uh, smooth out the water again. There are some nice waves lapping around the rocks. What I want to do is, is go for a long exposure to get that nice sort of ethereal milky water look. Now once the sun's gone down, the light levels are going to be quite low anyway, so I won't need anything as extreme as the big stopper. But um, the, uh, the little stopper, which is six stops, should do the job very well. So the little stopper, like the big stopper, has got the uh, foam seal around the edge to stop uh, light leaking in. And again, exactly the same, you need to uh, have it this way round with that little gap to the left and right. And then it just slots in the back slot like that. Just make sure we uh, line it up properly with the, uh, the baffle there to make sure no light can leak, leak in. And when we've done that, I'm just going to relax and wait for the light. Well, here's the final shot and I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Lots of lovely colour there, pink sky. The filters have done a fantastic job, so we've caught the uh, full range of tones in the shot. It's just wonderful being able to use filters with these ultra-wide lenses. Here we are at Swanage Pier on a lovely sunny morning. Blue sky, few clouds about. Landscape photographers absolutely love foreground interest and uh, one of the great things about using these ultra wide angle lenses is that they let you get in really close to that foreground and get it looming large in the frame with lots of depth of field as well. So I'm just going to set up a shot here where I'm using the plaques on the deck as the foreground and the shelter as the main focal point in the background. Now, just reviewing the test shot, a couple of things strike me. The first one is um, 
there's a bit of glare off the uh, off the deck, in particular the plaques and off the um, off the windows of the shelter, and it looks as if I'm going to need a grad as well. So to, to solve the uh, problem of the glare, we're going to use a polarizer. So I'm just going to fit the SW150 filter holder, and uh, we're going to use the uh, fit the polarizer first, so that we can see what sort of uh, uh, effect that has on the sky, and therefore how strong a grad I need to use. Now, because this filter's square, um, it won't rotate independently of a graduated filter, so you need to work out the rotation of the, uh, the polarizer before you uh, fit it. So, yeah, that's pretty much spot on there. So we'll put that one in first. And I'll just take that shot, review that. Okay, not going to need a strong grad, so uh, a one stop, a, a 0.3, will be absolutely fine for this shot. So this then goes in behind the polarizer like that. And uh, just line that up. Okay. Okay, perfect. So. Um, yeah, the polarizer's taken the glare off the deck and the windows, and uh, the uh, grad has uh, brought the sky under control there, so we've managed to capture the full range of tones in the shot. Lovely. So that's the new SW150 system from Lee. It's available for a number of uh, ultra-wide angle lenses, and there's a wide range of filters available, and it's fantastic being able to use these filters with such wide angle lenses.